Episode 6 Episode 6 of this town starts with us in Soho, London. Bardon shows up at Bliss Nightclub and prepares for the next stage of the operation. At the same time, Deuce receives an awful letter confirming that he won't be receiving redundancy pay. He begins to spiral, trying to drown his sorrows in water, leading back to his idea about temptation. In the end, he leaves in the middle of the night and heads over to see Wire. He shows up at the pub and decides he needs a bottle of rum and to slip again into his old alcoholic ways. He's torn up over the redundancies and believes Birmingham is burning around him. Wire though tries to keep him on the straight and narrow, encouraging him to pray instead. Unfortunately, it doesn't work and he downs the alcohol. Greg tries to chase after him, while Fiona and Jeannie take Dante out and drive back home, where Greg sees the state of him and tells him to straighten up. They need to find Deuce, and that means he's got to keep his head on him. Or, well, the best he can anyway. How does Greg get the family back together again? Dante prays to the heavens outside, asking God to help save Deuce. The girls, however, have a better plan. They believe that he could be their driver, driving them around to various gigs. Dante, having now seen the ugly side to life, decides to change the name of their band. It's now going to be called Fuck the Factory. They head to the church, where Greg finally brings Deuce in, in his drunken state. Greg steps up, and with a photo of their family, he decides to tell them a story of their future. He makes them both stand up and before their deceased mother, talking about exactly what they've been doing. Greg has actually written a song himself and decided he's going to be part of the band, making sure they don't mess up, and they're also going to fire the drummer, Maddie, as well. Unfortunately, she doesn't take it well as she smashes up a whole bunch of bottles in the garden. Does Bardon make it out of the organization? Eamon has decided to step up their efforts in reaching the British government. While blowing up train stations and pubs is one thing, Eamon thinks the organization need to go one step harder and target the government officials themselves. In the car, Bardon points out about the club and how he saw Marie while he was on the dance floor. Her spirit turned and walked away while he was there, a symbolic sign of showing how far he's slipped and fallen down this path. Bardon meets up with Greg at their usual meet and he feeds back exactly what's going on. The group are planning to set up a hit on the cabinet secretary for Northern Ireland. With this information, Greg will make sure that the secretary won't be killed and will not attend the rendezvous. Bardon will be able to get out with Greg, but his dad won't be so lucky. Greg also tells Bardon that this is over now and they'll be able to crack on with the band. Unfortunately, Greg's informant is on the other side of the river and tells him he's a good fisherman and they'll surely meet again. Does Estella stand up for herself? While the band practice, using their grim lyrics to juxtapose the major key chords, we cut across to Eamon, who bursts into Estella's flat and finds him in bed with Estella. She stands up for herself and points out that she's no longer his wife. He threw her out and now... She's decided to become her own woman. She tells him to make her men stand down and allow her to live in peace. He's chosen the cause and she's chosen herself. It seems to work and Eamon does eventually leave without anyone being killed. Meanwhile, the lonely drummer, Maddie, shows up and pours her heart out, pointing out that this is a band of redemption and second chances and she wants in. Greg decides they should record two songs, one with and one without her. They do just this, while Deuce and Estella show up to watch them play. How is the situation with Spark Hill resolved? In the morning, Greg shows up at the club and realizes he's in deep trouble. Carmen and the two men from Spark Hill are there. There's a suitcase with wired explosives on the table, and Carmen is twitchy. Greg, though, manages to hold his nerve and makes his own deal. He wants to add Fuck the Factory to the opening lineup for the big club opening, somewhere near the top. Carmen agrees hurriedly, and Greg drops a note on the table. This note is passed between the two men, who nod approvingly, and Greg disables the alarm. 
These men show up to see Eamon and the woman from the RA we saw earlier in the series, the one who basically killed Marie. They point a gun at her head and pull the trigger. How does this town end? Three days later, the band all head to the club and play. The series then ends with a still shot of Dante's face, looking over his shoulder and smiling at the great reception they receive from the crowd. The Episode Review So this town ends with a decent enough conclusion, although there is the faint promise of a possible second season depending on how well this one does. The show has been good, with glimmers of compelling cinematography throughout and plenty to whet the appetite. However, these later episodes have turned the focus to the female characters, and while there's nothing wrong with that, they haven't been anywhere near as well-developed as the men, with Greg and Bardon in particular standing out for having a lot of depth and intrigue about them. The band is clearly the way out and the escape for these individuals, and it works well to tie into the mood and feel of England during the 80s and the rise of punk. The song choices have been on point throughout the six episodes, while the undercurrent of crime drama has worked well to keep a steady level of drama throughout. Whether this gets greenlit for another season or not, there's enough here to whet the appetite and enjoy all the same.